In this video, we'll be discussing supervised learning. So far in this playlist, each time we've mentioned the process of training a model or the learning process that the model goes through, we've actually been implicitly talking about supervised learning. Supervised learning occurs when the data in our training set is labeled. Recall from our video on train validation and test sets that we explain that both the training data and the validation data are labeled when passed to the model. This is the case for supervised learning. With supervised learning, each piece of the data that's passed to the model during training is a pair that consists of the input object, or sample, along with the corresponding label, or output value. So essentially, with supervised learning, the model is learning how to create a mapping from given inputs to particular outputs based on what it's learning from the labeled training data. For example, let's say we're training a model to classify different types of reptiles based on images of reptiles. Now during training, we pass in an image of a lizard. Since we're doing supervised learning here, we'll also be supplying our model with the label for this image, which in this case is simply just lizard. Based on what we saw in our video on training, we know that the model will then classify the output of this image and then determine the error for that image by looking at the difference between the value it predicted and the actual label for the image. To do this, the labels need to be encoded into something numeric. So the label of lizard may be encoded as zero, whereas the label of turtle may be encoded as one. So we'll go through this process of determining the error or loss for all of the data in our training set for as many epochs as we specify. And remember, during this training, the objective of the model is to minimize the loss. So when we deploy our model and use it to predict on data it wasn't trained on, it will be making these predictions based on the labeled data that it did see during training. So if we didn't supply our labels to the model, then what's the alternative? Well, as opposed to supervised learning, we could instead use something called unsupervised learning. We could also use another technique called semi-supervised learning. We'll be covering each of these topics in future videos. For now, we're going to take a peek at some Keras code to reiterate how and where we supply our labeled samples to our model. So I'm here in my Jupyter Notebook, and we have just a simple sequential model here with two hidden dense layers and an output layer with two output categories. Now nothing here should be new information. Everything's shown here in terms of what libraries we're importing, as well as the architecture of the model and how we're compiling our model have been covered in earlier videos of the playlist. So if you see anything here that you're unsure about, be sure to check out earlier videos. Okay, so we're assuming the task of this model is to classify whether an individual is male or female based on his or her height and weight. Now, after compiling our model, I've just given an example here of some training data that I completely made up for illustration purposes. The actual training data is stored here in this train samples variable. Here, we have a list of tuples, and each of these tuples is an individual sample, and the sample is the weight and height of a person. The first element in each tuple is the weight measured in pounds, and the second element is height measured in inches. Now skipping down to this next cell, we have our labels stored in this train labels variable. Here a 0 represents a male, and a 1 represents a female. The position of each of these labels corresponds to the position of each sample in our train samples variable. So for example, this first 1 here, which represents a female, it's the label for the first element in the train samples array here. This second one in the train labels corresponds to the second sample in our train samples, and so on. Now when we go to train our model, we call model.fit, as we've discussed in previous videos, and the first parameter here, specified by x, is going to be our train samples variable. And the second parameter, specified by y, is going to be the corresponding train labels. And that's really all there is to it for supplying labeled data to our Keras model for supervised learning. So in addition to this, hopefully you have an understanding for what supervised learning is in general and how to make use of it. As mentioned earlier, in future videos, we'll contrast this idea with other learning mechanisms. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. And thanks for watching.